Hey, Brad, I'm going to be looking at some of your gameplay uh, against Isabel. It's three games of review. Uh, yeah, three games of review. So that's what we're going to be doing. Um, so for review, what I like to do is I just like to take a look at some gameplay. Get like a game, uh, maybe half a game of gameplay in there. Get an idea of what's going on. And then I review what we saw. And then from there, we look at the rest of the game. So let's take a look at your set versus Pochu. Ooh, that's a little bit loud. I'm sorry. That's better. Okay. Uh huh. Yep, yep. Uh huh. Hmm, okay. Mm-hmm. Ah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Shoot poke. I see. Ooh, okay. So, in terms of what we're seeing so far, we're two minutes in. Um, in terms of what we're seeing so far, the main thing that stands out to me is that it looks like you don't really have a game plan. It doesn't really look like you have a very structured way, um, kind of like a structured way to think about how to play this matchup. And um, the reason I think that is because a lot of the choices you make play directly into Isabel's strengths. And... Well, I mean, let me give you an example, right? So what is Isabel really good at? Well, Isabel, of course, has her projectiles. She has her side B to grab you. And in general, both those tools are really good at getting someone out of the air. Uh, where do you spend most of your time in the air? Now, and, and, and you can say like, okay, well, but I'm playing Peach and Peach has good air games. She does, but she also has really like probably the best ground game in the game. Uh, because she has ground float, right? Ground float turns your ground game into an absolute monstrous uh, part of your game. Um, so, you know, you can, you know, ground float at them uh, and turn it into a shield, which is some of the best dash shielding in the game because you technically have very little lag because you can, you know, start landing at any point. Um, she has extreme control over her float because of her air acceleration. She, her float aerials are all super safe, a lot safer than any ground move would be in the game. Um, so I would have loved to see a lot of ground game here, right? Uh, and then on top of that, right, if you think about Isabel, Isabel is best when you are approaching her. Okay, so we should try to not really approach her, right? So that doesn't mean that you have to, like, you know, just retreat all the time, but it means that you don't, fo like, you focus on... Um, you know, trying to get her to come to you, which you can do through baits or through turnips, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And at those moments, she's a lot weaker because, again, right, she doesn't have like an amazing approach, like a uh, fox jump in there or a roy jump in there or uh, a mifra dash tag, right? Like, so, so those are just some weaknesses that I feel like, you know, when you're playing as Isabel, you should abuse on like a fundamental level. Outside of that, your game plan doesn't really seem to be really focused on Peach's strengths either. Uh, where Peach has, well, basically, again, her ground game is, is absolutely insane. Um, she can float, but generally what you'll be doing is like a, a, a high, high float downer, right? High float downer and using it to kind of like approach, which uh, covers aggression 
at like a close to mid range, right? Because if, if they are at a close to rich range, mid range, close to mid range, you go for a high float. If they jump out of shield or if they jump towards you, the downer is going to intercept them. And if they stay passive, then the downer is going to set up pressure, right? So it's a, it's a pretty good coverage tool, but it's also very committal. And if someone is retreating, then they're going to anti air you, which, uh, you know, Isabel, of course, uh, is going to do. So um, in that sense, um, that, that that's a lot of improvement points already. I feel like in general, like you should be focusing way more on just getting into the right ranges and playing the range from there. Um, in other words, if you think about Peach, right, like her best range is up close, right, where she just has, you know, float nair, float back air, uh, high float down air, uh, mostly float nair, though, um, which turns into a minus two and is through that an amazing mix-up because minus two on a shield is really good if it hits it combos for like 70 80 percent sometimes it can kill um so what you want to be thinking about is like okay so how do i get into my ideal range because that is the main struggle for peach right because when she's up close she kind of just fucks characters up and if you struggle to fuck characters up then uh, i recommend doing a bit of tech practice right getting better at your flow cancels uh, getting more precise in terms of ending them as soon as possible, right? So float near, make sure it's like minus two uh, or, you know, minus three, minus four, if, uh, you know, it, with a little bit of human error, of course. Um, but yeah, if you struggle to do that, then in a lot of cases, you can just like kind of like lab out your pressure mix-ups, lab out the flow chart in terms of how you want to pressure. Uh, if you float near, what can you do? You can go for a grab, you can go for another float near, you can go for a jump call out, you can uh, wait and you can shield yourself, you can go for a jab, jab, uh, there's a lot of things you can do. If you go for a float back air, you can drift back, go for another float back air, try to whiff it, try to like counter aggression. Um, you know, again, float down air goes into nair. You can go for a strong hit nair, weak hit nair. You can go for an air dodge. You can go for another down air. You can go for a shield poke fair. Uh, you can go for an empty land, uh, spot dodge, you grab, down till, jab. Uh, there, anyway, lots, lots, basically lots of variations in your pressure and very few that I'm seeing in the way you're playing because you kind of struggle to get to that position, right? So getting to that position should be most of your game plan as Peach because once you're in that position, it's all the same, right? It's, it's, unless it's like Game Watch, which is, you know, like an extreme example, like Game Watch, Mario, uh, Lucina are a little bit exceptional, but um, again, you know, it's about the idea. The idea is you want to get into your good range. So how does Isabel stop you from getting into close range? Well, she's going to cover the air with projectiles. So what do we want to do? We don't want to jump. How do we counterplay her covering the air with projectiles? Well, we move over the ground. So let's say she does like a rising slingshot. It does. It is going to auto cancel, of course. Um, but what does that mean? That means that the entire ground area is, is not covered, right? So like if this is the stage and she goes for like a jump slingshot, uh, you dash under it, right? Very, very straightforward. You dash stack her or you go for float, whatever. And then you, you know, you hit her, you go into advantage state, blah, blah. Um, so like, that's a huge part of playing Isabel. Now what's going to happen? She's going to do short hop landing, landing slingshots. So what happens if she does those? Well, you dash shield and then you, uh, you wait. Maybe she's going to jump forward, in which case she's coming towards you. That's good. Or maybe she stays in place, in which case you can, you know, dash shield again, or she retreats, you can dash shield again. You push her into the corner. Um, a lot of these things just like at, at its core, it's like, okay, so what do I want to achieve? What is stopping me from doing that? And then you kind of like tackle those issues, right? So that mentality is extremely, extremely important, especially as Peach, because a lot of what she does is less about the situation and more about getting into that situation. However, the way that she gets into the situation is, is, is kind of like the same every single time. It's like, you think about what they do. It, they probably have some sort of weakness in their pressure, right? So if you think about like Shulk, he cannot grab you. If you think about Cloud, he struggles to grab you too. Think about Isabel, struggles to grab you. So look at those characters, you just hold shield, right? And she has a good shield because she has float out of shield, right? So you can float and then shield something and then do uh, float, nair, cancel. And instead of it being like an auto shield nair, like a link nair, that if it gets shielded, he loses. Uh, even if it gets shielded, it gets turned into pressure. So even though it might not be the fastest out of shield options, like frame eight ish, um, if they don't have like if if they don't have something to stop it, right? So if they don't have like a frame two jab or something to interrupt you, then they have to shield it or roll or jump. In which case, float nair beats all of those, right? Like they you float nair, they roll. You're you're done so quickly. You can just chase them. You float near they shield. You beat them. You float near they spot dodge. You punish the spot dodge, right? So there's a lot of ways in which shielding is really good for Peach. Plus, she you know she can parry. Parries are good in this game. Um, so that that's just some stuff to think about. Let me give you some examples in this game. 
No, yeah, like just a quick warning. We're probably going to see a lot of the same issues in games two and three. I'll, you know, um, later on I'll be giving you advice still, but it will be more like granular advice rather than generic, right? Because this is like more of a like this is something you can fix for the entirety of the game. Whereas, um, you know, if I tell you, oh, you should be, you know, doing these small things, they're obviously more like optimizations. Anyway, let's get into the big stuff first. Did you put this music track over this, by the way? It's. <laughs> It's it, it's just funny. It's a little bit uh, tonally dissonant uh, from uh, fighting game gameplay, but it's 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 entertaining. Um, anyway, oh, he's approaching you, right? W what happens here? He should get hit. What happens instead? He hits you. This is not safe, right? I just want you to know. This is like, this is about where you're actionable. So this is, uh, is this 60 FPS? It's not. It's 30 FPS. So we can say. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, uh, 21, 22. So you had, you had about more than 20 frames to punish him. That's like the, the window that we're looking at. So that's something to just, again, uh, I'm not saying that you're doing it wrong and blah, blah, blah. I'm just like trying to explain like, okay, this is, this is what you should be thinking about. It's like, okay, he does an approaching fair. Rising aerial, I'm not punishing. It's kind of like if Link does a rising there on your shield, what are you gonna do? You're gonna punish it out of shield, right? That's a huge drop opportunity. So uh, yeah, Isabel's nair is good out of shield. Uh, that's basically what happened here. You try to jump, float, grab. Um, this is a little bit of matchup experience, right? You could have you could have been more accurate about your pressure. Respecting the fact that she has an air out of shield. Her nair is extremely good because it, it, it it's kind of like tilted or, or slanted, whatever you want to call it. So it hits a little bit lower. It's like frame five, which makes it frame eight out of shield, which is good. Uh, and as you can see, kind of like angles uh, downwards, right? So it can hit low targets like, you know, you down tilting. Not that it matters in this case because you were already standing up. Um, but just keep that in mind, right? Not a punish, though. not a punish. So again, you're in the air. She anti airs you. Don't be in the air. Okay, I was just a little bit weird in terms of spacing. Uh, you voluntarily drifted into uh, the mine, which is obviously not the greatest idea. Okay, so again, we're in the air, we get anti-aired. Um, so this is something I recommend. If you find your way back to a platform, and your opponent has center stage control, which they do, uh, it's very hard to contest directly because when you jump, they're going to react to your jump. You know, you're floaty. Very, very little chance of you succeeding. What I do recommend is that you try to get down to like this area, which can be a runoff or a drop through or whatever you want to do. Uh, and then from there, trying to contest center. Way less committal. Way, way less committal. All right. So again, a lot, a lot of time spent in the air. So this forward air, the reason it works is because he just overcommitted to a forward smash for no reason. Like, again, this is why I'm talking about game plan, right? What function does this forward air serve in your game plan? How does this forward air complement other options that you tend to use? And how do those other options lead into you being able to land this forward air, right? So you really got to think like the context of this move in the rest of my ideas. How does this fit? So I'll give you an example, right? What we talked about with the slingshot before. Isabel uses high slingshots. What's it gonna do? Is it gonna get you on the ground? She's gonna use short hop landing slingshots, right? This is this is two complementary ideas. Uh, for you, right, there is, I'm gonna dash at them with, with ground floats and shield, which they're gonna counterplay with, for example, like let's say a dash tack or, or a down tilt. I go for dash and high float, right? These are two complementary ideas. Full hop. Forward air with a floaty character, no fast fall. Oh, you actually do fast fall. I'm sorry. Um, you fast fall a little bit late. I I mean, I thought the fast fall was going to come here, but you floated for a little bit because you were probably holding jump. Um, anyway, point being, uh, this does not fit within the context of a game plan. It's just, you know, a bit of a YOLO, which is, you know, sometimes you need to, you need to go ham. Um, but most of the time, if someone goes ham, you know, uh, it gets turned into a little bit of lunch. Um, this time they were to the lunch though, you go for fair. So this is something you want to keep in mind. So once you push them into the corner, set up your corner pressure. 
Okay, right here, they're stuck in the corner. Set up your pressure. This is good. You hit him, they're in a bad spot. Just kind of mess up the input. So I, I, I don't dislike this. You would have hit them if you were turned the right way. Uh, what I will tell you is what probably happened here is you were drifting back, as you can see. Uh, this Nair is drifting back. And you're probably holding back. If you hold back while you land here, it automatically turns you around. So that's something to keep in mind. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is a better way of contesting center. Again, look at what Isabel does. Right, Isabel has control over center. This is really bad. She just jumps into the corner herself. Again, the same forward air is like minus 20 again. You don't punish. You almost get anti aired again. You pressure her. This is good. Wait for the nair. No punish again. Right? So like, why do you shield here? Just very objectively, why do you shield here? Because you think she's going to retaliate. Why aren't you ready for the retaliation? Right? So what you're looking for, again, it, it's all about game plan, right? So when I land with a safe aerial and I shield, the reason I shield is because I want to protect myself from her retaliation. If they retaliate, what do I do? Right? So it all fits into a plan. If you didn't think she was going to retaliate, right? So if you weren't ready for the nair, you should have just thrown out another float aerial, right? So you do a landing back air float nair. What does she do? Right? Uh, the only thing she can do is like nair in between. Um, and if she nairs in between, um, right? If she nairs in between, then you can wait for that and then punish her after uh, having waited for it. So uh, make sure that your ideas complement each other and they have a clear goal. Uh, and at the end of the day, of course, the goal is the thing that complements. Uh, so let's continue watching. Okay, so this is, I just I just want to point this out. Uh, this is a super overcommittal forwarder from you, your end. If you just like after this forwarder hitbox, if you just drift back here, you would have been fine. I don't know why you constantly drift forward here because now you're the one off stage. You make it work because, you know, you barely avoid this down air, so it's fine. But that's not a good position to be in. And even though I say it's fine, look at this position. They have center stage control, you're in a corner, right? So like we're in a bad position again. So I just want you to keep that in mind. Like you gotta be more consistent. If your opponent's in the corner, right? So whether they're in the air or on the, or on the ground, what is the worst case scenario? The worst case scenario is that they get to center and now you're the one getting cornered. So you always want a position to prevent them from getting to the center. So if they're off stage like this and you forward air, your goal is to drift back so that they don't get to the center before you do, right? Very, very uh, important part of your positioning in advantage state. Punish. A lot of time spent in the air again. In the air. Mm -hmm. Nearly avoid the up tilt. But yeah, again, this is uh, almost getting anti aired Okay, so they're off stage. They interrupt you, it's fine. Kind of sucks, but it happens. They're in the corner, don't let them get to center. Okay, so I'm just gonna ask you something. And this is not like critique, this is just like something to reflect on, okay? They're in the corner, you got center stage control like this. What is worth more, pressuring Isabel or plucking a turnip? Right, because look at how much room she has. Look at how, like, of course she she kind of like, you know, this is a little bit, a little bit silly about Isabel. Um, but the turnip hits, you have the same situation, she just has like 10% more damage. Which is honestly like, sure, we take those, but like not ideal. If you had been there with pressure and you hit a backer here, she would have been off stage, she could have died. So at the end of the day, right, uh, you can go for the turnip in that situation, but I personally highly recommend uh, going for the, um, the pressure, right? Just the normals, the float cancels, etc. I float again, you almost get anti-aired, a little bit unaware of the, of the mine. Drop it to center again. It, it, it works out because she charges a forward smash. Yeah, I don't think outside of down tilt, I've seen you on the ground a lot. I think like for you to improve with Peach, like the most important thing is that you stop jumping. Like. That could have been a float fair, though short up is not bad. That could have been a float back air, ground float back air. Um, that could have been a, uh, a high float down air. This could have been a ground, right? Like all of this being in the air makes your character extremely committal. Whereas like Peach's main strengths, strength 
uh, singular, is that she's non-committal as hell. She's the least committal character in the game, by far. Uh, actually, by far, as in like, she's almost playing a different game. Uh, no, she's literally playing a different game. Like, look at this. On paper, if we do a float near, we spend three frames in jump squat. We spend five frames waiting for the hitbox. And then we land and we spend uh, seven frames in landing lag. That is uh, 15 frames total. This is about a Rob down tilt worth of animation for a combo starter kill move that does 13% uh, and is minus two on shield. Uh, and if we compare that to Rob, it's like 14 frames. So it's literally about the same. The difference is that your move does 13% and is safer than Rob down tilt. Uh, it is a little bit slower, to be fair. Um, but the point is, right, like, that is the game that you're playing. You can say the same about Becker, which has even more range. Um, though with Becker, you want to wait a bit for it to get to full range. So it's, it's, it's a little bit slower, of course. Um, but the point is, like, that's the level of commitment that Peach works with. Uh, but you're committing in ways that are extremely, um, extremely, uh, well, I, I, I almost want to say exaggerated compared to uh, a ground-based, ground-float-based game plan. So a lot of what you want to do is just like tech practice to get to a point where you can actually start using ground floats uh, as, as like a core part of your game plan. Because if you're not using ground floats, then Peach sucks. Uh, because you get things like this, which is, you know, like, I, I get what you're going for. You're trying to punish uh, the whiff, right? But this is extremely unsafe. Uh, and it doesn't get punished, which is good. And you react well. Um, but just keep that in mind. Game. Yep. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Get the counter. Keep him in the corner. That's the goal. Okay. Could have killed him, but I like it either way. Okay. And now he's out of the corner. You see how, like, your positioning here? does not make sure that she does that, that you deny her from getting to the center, right? You're trying to hit her. And what's the worst case scenario here is that they get past you. Uh, oh, that's a very thin line. So the worst case scenario here is that they get past you. So what you want to do is you want to position in a way that even if you miss, you still have control over the stage, right? So this is you pushing into the corner. Um, okay, sorry, someone messaged me. Okay. Jab, jab, down throw. Mm hmm. Give him the corner. And again, we see the overcommittal drift off stage. Keep him in the corner. And we overcommit again. Anti aired. Anti aired. Okay, nice sneak with the side B getting past Isabel. Auto cancel two, good awareness. Okay, a little bit of a little bit of an error in execution, but I like what you were going for here with the float and error. It's good. Okay, something to keep in mind. Um, I don't know if it's the same for Peach, but a lot of characters when they land on this, they can actually shield it. But I think. It doesn't look to be the case for Peach. Um, but yeah, just want to keep that in mind, like keep the mine in mind a little bit more. Okay. Mm hmm. Yep, he's holding on to center. Side B and get punished. So this is this is basically like he anti airs you, he holds out the center, and you just don't get past him. So in that situation, what can you do? Well, you just gotta you know dash shield, make your way out of the corner very very slowly and methodically, play around their options very well, and just go from there. Let's see. I'm just gonna quickly take a look. This is game two, and this is game three. Okay. Okay. Yep, anti airs, anti airs. Okay. Pressure was a little bit off here, right? Because he managed to sneak a grab in here. 
I think you up tilted or four tilted here. Uh, yeah, just a uh, little bit of a miss input, I assume. Okay, so what we're seeing here is that instead of finding an opening, you're forcing an opening, which they kind of like dodge around with movement and then with, they with punish. So something that you want to keep in mind with Peach is that like a lot of your openings will not come in situations like this. A lot of your openings come from the movement that you use beforehand to create it. Okay, so it's less about like, oh, I'm just going to, you know, go forward and hit my opponent. And it's more about I'm going to create a situation that's good. And then your, uh, you know, then you're going to get your hit. So it, again, it's like getting into the right range and then trying to act. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. I would not recommend doing this. I get that's the most damage, but now they're back into center and you're. You know, you're trying to contest it, and you do so because they overcommitted a little bit of a stupid way. Uh, but you, you should just, like, throw them back into the corner. Even if it's less damage, you have a way better position. Way, way, way better position. Okay, yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. A little bit off on a combo. Or well, a little bit over committing after dropping the combo. So that's something to keep in mind. It's something that a lot of Peach players do. Well, a lot of like combo uh game characters do is that when they drop a combo, they kind of like overcommit to try to pick it back up. What I recommend is that you kind of like when you realize that you drop something, uh just like take a moment to reevaluate what's the position and what's the best thing to do. Okay, instead of trying to be in a mindset of I dropped it, I deserve it. Uh, I should I should keep going. Uh, we, you know I'm, I'm just gonna overcommit to surprise them and pick it back up. Um, like make sure that you don't get stuck in a mindset where you overcommit. Um, okay, okay. Corner them, right? Yep. So much time spent in the air. It. I'm sorry if I'm not giving a lot of feedback because a lot of the things that are going wrong, it's just like the exact same things that went wrong in game one, right? You're just in the air. He's anti-airing you. He overcommits to these smashes. Like strategically, like think about it this way, right? Let's say someone is like, uh, if you think about Achilles, right? Achilles from the myths, like you know about the term, the Achilles heel, like the one weakness. Uh, how did they beat Achilles? Well, they didn't beat Achilles by just like brute forcing fighting him. What they did is they waited for his heel to be vulnerable, and then they attacked his heel. Uh, a very, very straightforward way um, of, of going about it. Um, and that's something that you should be doing as well. So what is your opponent's Achilles heel, right? And if you think about this, Isabel, it's that they're overcommittal, overcommittal as fuck, right? Like, they will very readily uh, give up stage control to approach you with a rising aerial. They will very readily... Um, throw out smashes and just charge them forever. So if you want to beat him, why would you fight him outside of those situations? All that you need, literally all that you need, is to wait for him to overcommit. And then when he does overcommit, you punish him, right? Very, 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 very straightforward. Um, and, and in this situation, I think a lot of what you're doing wrong is that you're fighting him when he is strong. So that's something to just like think about. It's like, okay, so how do I make sure that I only fight when he's weak and when is he weak well that's something that for one you of course you want to figure out um but that's also something that is kind of like um it, let's put it this way it's something that you want to figure out and then build your strategy around because if you if you if you do that then you'll be fine so for example i know that he eventually overcommits with approaches okay that means that i shouldn't be approaching I just wait for him to eventually overcommit and then I punish that. Or I know that he eventually chose, charges a smash and then I punish that. Okay, well, then you wait for him to overcommit and then you punish the smash, right? So don't fight him when he's strong. Fight him when he's weak. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yep, that's the overcommitment. Just wait for it, punish it. Nice. OK. 
Okay, don't normal get up. Okay. Again, you let him back to center. Yeah, again, it's it's a lot of the a lot of the same issues, right? Once you identify them, you too much time in the air. Uh, once you identify them, they kind of like come back, especially in the same matchup. This is good. I like this. Just recover. Okay, I like I like what you tried there. Keep him in the corner. Overcommitted with the smash. Now he's the one cornering you, right? So, just by getting better at keeping your opponent in the corner through better positioning and better, you know, managing your commitment better, you're already gonna be like ten times better. It's gonna be such a huge improvement for you. Okay, miss input. I assume. Okay. Yep. Yep, spending a lot of time in the air. You just want to be on the ground more. Being on the ground is flexible. Being in the air is committal. That's what it comes down to. Like, you don't have shield, and you're a character who... Well, it's not like you lack range. Peach has decent decent range, right? Her back air is especially insane. Her forward air, very, very good. Uh, down air, you know, sticks her legs out pretty far for a down air especially. Um, what you want to do is you want to get to a point where that's less of a weakness, right? Because like, while you have decent range, you don't have as much range as Isabel. She has projectiles. So what you want to do is you want to get to a point where, you know, you abuse the weaknesses of her moves because you cannot just beat them by using your own moves, right? And it looks like right now you're trying to beat her by using your own moves. No, no, no. If, if like, think about strategy in this way, right? You put yourself in a situation, okay, who's stronger? And you figure out who's, who's stronger by thinking about who like who has the better tools right so if you think about it we're in this range if we both do what we want to do right which is isabel does like slingshot you do like i don't know run up um isabel's gonna win so she's stronger in that situation what does that mean that means that you need to build your strategy around her in that situation now let's say you're up close and when you don't both do what you want to do isabel does like i don't know rising nair and you do a float nair you're gonna win so up close who has to play around who is the best play around you. So the more you think about it that way, the better. Okay. Okay. You really want to work on your spacing too, because a lot of your back airs are kind of like cross ups like this. And if you just like space with the tip of this back air, which is huge, right? Like the, this back air hitbox is pretty darn big it's this joda too um you're gonna put yourself in such a good situation right think about it right think about it think about a peach where that is like at this spacing and back air is a shield like this uh what can isabel do very very little now if we back air the way that you're doing right now what can isabel do a lot like nair and grab so what do we do we shield now if we space we don't have to defend because there's nothing they can do to retaliate so we can continue aggressing right so spacing is not about being safe it's about enabling more aggression it's very very important okay yep i don't mind that forward smash by the way i think it was pretty solid yeah and then we missed attack okay let's go to the joker game Ah, I dropped a combo. That's a shame. Float? Yeah, it was a ground float back here. Let's fucking get it. Ah, oh, that's a shame. Yep, very aerial gets anti air by the gun. Give me ground floats. Okay. Oh, if that was a ground float back out of shield, you would have had, like, I think a bit of a conversion here. Ground float back or fall, dash up, dash attack. I think that would have worked here. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay, let's go back a little bit. All right, so if there's a drop on a turn of it there, it's fine, the back air. Again, you wanna think, right? What's the worst case scenario here if they get back to center? So you're now the one getting cornered, right? So again, in attack chase, it's not like you should always cover roll in, 
But if there is little information, which in this case is true because he played Isabel before who's floaty and doesn't get put in tech chases often, uh, if you don't have information, you cover their highest reward option, which is them rolling in. So if you cover the roll in and they tech in place, then you pressure them into the corner. And if they roll out, then you chase them and then you pressure them into the corner from here. So uh, yeah, yep, yep. A lot, lot, lot of uh, better, better option coverage way of going about it is to just focus on like, okay, what's the worst case scenario? Let's make sure that that doesn't happen. Okay. Mm-hmm. Forward out of the corner. Extremely vertical gameplay from you. Okay, this is good. This is fine. Yep. Mm hmm. Oh, okay. Yep, again. Like, I think this is also like a huge thing for you is like being ready for punishes because like, why do you shield? Because he's gonna counter attack. Okay, so why aren't you ready for the counter attack, right? That, that's, that's, that's the main thing. Um, that's just the flow back out of shield. Very, very free. Um, nice, nice gimp. I like it. Good use of the turnip. Okay. Yep. This is fine. Could have been bigger, right? So you want to lab float near, float near, dash grab instead of just float near, uh, dash grab, but it's fine. It's fine. This is as long as you're converting, it's fine. Okay. Counter very committal when you die for it. Yeah. So a little bit of risk reward. We mentioned this before where, uh, you know, like you go for full hops, like full hop forwarders. And I understand how Connor works into your game plan here a little bit better because he's playing Arsene. Um, but the sheer risk reward is just a little bit, uh, a, a little bit out of your favor. Because if you hit it, you don't even get rid of Arsene. They, did it, they don't even die. But if, if it fails, then you die at 107, uh, which is early, right? That's early. I know it's Arsene, right? But like, uh, let's say this was a roll in, like it would have been really hard for him to punish that with a kill. Okay. So I want you to think about your positioning when juggling too, right? So again, you want to hold on to center, right? Because again, um, in an advantage state, if you hold on to center, like we said with Isabel, it's hard to jump into you. What does that mean? That means they land somewhere in the corner, which means that you get quarter pressure, which is good for Peach because Peach is on the slower and lower range side again, which means that generally what happens is you aggress, they dash back. So if they have less room to dash back, like when they're in the corner, then they're going to be more threatened. They have to deal with you more, which means that you get more out of your moves, right? So you hold on to center and you go from there. So what is your goal when you're holding on to center? Well, you want to make sure that they don't land in center. So what do you want to do? If they jump in, you want to counter them. So if you float high, like the way you're doing, then you don't have time to react to moves. So what you want to do is you want to ground float and go for up air. Now ground float up air, let's say they air dodge through it, you cancel the ground float, you grab them, you throw them into the corner, right? doesn't matter which side, both sides work. Um, if they get hit, you just up air, you just chase them with up air, you go back to the ground, you go for ground float up airs. There are characters that this doesn't work against, like Cloud or Sephiroth or Shulk with like big disjoints, but like generally this works. So this is is this is a fine first up air. It's a little bit committal, but you know I get what you were going for. But if you just like drop back down and then float it here, it would have been fine. But because you're up so high, you don't get to react, and then you get a reversal, and now you're in a corner, and now he dash attacks you off stage, and you could just die here, right? You almost died. You literally almost died. Not not because of uh, like any of your choices in disadvantage because you didn't have a lot of choices. You almost died because you juggled in a way that made no sense. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Okay. Are you actually gonna die? Okay, you're good. Again, you're letting them reversal. In general, like just tightening up your advantage state to be less vulnerable to reversals is huge because reversal one, and then you reversal them, and then they reversal you, right? Like that that is like if you wanna grow, like that's one of the biggest things to um to uh fix. Okay. Uh huh. Yep. Reversal again. All right, you're in a corner. Now you're getting corner pressured. And you reversal him. And yep. And this is fine, right? Like this can happen, right? Like you pressure him, you fuck up, you retreat a little bit, you 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 miss, and now we're back to center. That's fine. This is good. That's better than getting reversal, right? Good, good punish. Okay, so this nair, this is the right idea. You should just be reacting way more. 
because like this nair is super preemptive right you're not reacting too too much so you react to the lb and then you press nair which should hit around here and then you hit him um your float is also a little bit too high uh, as you can see the nair would not have hit either way um but yeah just keep that in mind it was a good that a good idea just want to work on the execution a bit and then again, we're like super, super vertical where we double jump. Uh, I don't I don't mind this, actually. I think double jump flow cancel is a good way to get out of disadvantage. It's just that like in this situation, just like land to the platform, right? It's right there. Uh, you're landing to center, which gives you this entire bit of extra time for him to punish you, which is if you look at how he punishes you, like exactly why he punishes you, right? If you were on a platform, you would have landed by the time you're here, right? Because you would have landed... Uh, at this point, instead of landing here, which means you wouldn't be here in the first place. So, uh, yeah, just a little bit of a decision-making error. And a little bit off on the DI as well. But, um, yeah, I don't mind double jump float cancel out of this advantage. I think it's good. It's, it's a little bit committal, but it's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, so again, respawn your priority. Make sure they don't get to center. They get to center, right? So, again, you get reversaled. Okay. Oh, yeah, this is what I mean with like the retreating to counteract your uh, pressure. And honestly, that happens most often if you move and attack at the same time, right? Like if you move forward while you're attacking, that's often the most committal way to attack. So again, that's why I say you want to move into the right position first and then you want to attack. Um, but I mean, it happens. It was also just a good punish by, uh, by your opponent. And then they down air you. Yeah, that's rough. Um... Overall, I think you have a lot of good idea, a, a lot of good ideas, but you just don't have the technical prowess yet to turn them into realities in a good way. So yeah, I hope the feedback that I gave was useful. I know I didn't really pause on a lot of topics, but um, that's because a lot of them are kind of like straightforward. Um, if you do have questions about them, feel free to ask. I'm like super willing to help and explain what I did mean. Um, just send me a DM on Discord or Twitter, it doesn't matter, and I'll do my best to help you out. For now, uh, Brad, I hope you have a I hope you have a great day. Thank you, thank you for your support. And uh, we'll keep in touch. All right. Talk to you later, man. Bye-bye.